Hello everyone, welcome to my The Way Home official channel. I hope everyone is having a great day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The Way Home's episode from this week makes me feel everything. The episode begins with a frantic cat attempting to get in touch with Alice. However, since Alice awakens in the 1999 timeline in the barn, she doesn't get any calls from her mother. After a long night, Kat worries that Alice has vanished, much like her brother Jacob did years ago, and that history is repeating itself. In 1999, Alice, a teenager, tries to persuade Elliot that she has traveled back in time as they stroll through the woods toward the pond. She informs him that in order to return home, one must pass through the pond's portal. Though he finds the entire situation absurd, he seizes the chance to inquire further, the most poignant of which being that he is curious about Alice's father. He's certainly not her father, Alice tells him in an indignant reply. Alice interrupts and changes the subject, telling him that he should take her seriously going forward. With that, she leaps in and leaves Elliot in 1999, where he is left feeling lost, anxious, and looking for her in the pond. Contemporary Times Adult Elliot, Evan Williams, watches Alice as she runs across the field. Soon afterward, Kat is overcome with grief over her brother's death as she gets home from her hunt for Alice. Kat is relieved to discover Alice, who is still alive and well, in her bedroom when she arrives home. But the fun soon wanes, and she starts lecturing Alice about her self-centered choices. Alice tries to explain herself, but she's interrupted and told she's grounded. Kat is frustrated and wonders what has happened to her mother because the day before, they spent time together as a carefree and happy teen. While working in the garden, Del and her friend Rita talk about how having Kat and Alice back could impede the progress Del has made in her personal healing. Rita disputes Del's claim that she sent the note to Kat that led her there in the first place. To inquire about Alice, Brady gives Kat a call. He is informed by Kat that Alice is safe at home and that she wonders if they should just head back to Minneapolis. Brady informs her that because he landed her a book deal, she should give that idea more thought. The publisher has requested that she create a true crime novel concerning Jacob's abduction. She informs him that she doesn't need his assistance anymore and asks why he wants to aid her. He advises her to consider it, Perhaps this book will make going back home meaningful. Elliot gets embarrassed by Kat at school when she tells him they have to talk about last night in front of a group of his co-workers. He becomes agitated and threatens to fire her if she continues to speak to him in that manner at school. She asks whether he is aware of what she is aware of and confronts him for promising to aid her any time. Until Elliot acknowledges that he knows and remembers, they continue to argue without revealing what they know in front of one another. Alice questions how her mother could have named her after herself and yet not be able to recall her current appearance. Elliot tells her that time is strange and that, because it doesn't seem conceivable, her mother doesn't recall. He also advises her to be aware of the pond's regulations and that she must choose her trip dates wisely because she is absent from this timeline for the same length of time as she is present in the other. When she learns that it wasn't a one-time occurrence, she is shocked. A lot of questions are raised by the thought of going back again, but Elliot's class interrupts. Kat searches Jacob's room at home through an old box. A flashback shows her and Jacob jotting down notes in an old journal. Del walks in and throws off the recollection. Kat wants to sit down and discuss her brother with her mother. After telling her to put the journal aside and let the past go, Del shuts her down. Suddenly, Del informs Kat that she has to get herself useful while she works through her issues and sends her off to deliver honey to the cafe. Kat's former high school rival Monica greets her as she gets to the cafe. Kat understands after bouncing back and forth that this was more than just a delivery when her mother forces her to attend an unwelcome employment interview with Monica. Kat declines her request with grace and informs Monica that she doesn't need a job that evening because she has a meal. Del and Kat quarrel over Monica's setting. 
Cat won't listen to Del's explanations that she was only attempting to assist Cat in getting back on her feet. Cat tells Alice and Del that she has been offered a book deal to write a book about Jacob's disappearance. Cat believes writing a book about Jacob could be cathartic, but Del is adamantly against it. Del says Cat can't write about it if she doesn't give in. After this disagreement, Alice asks them to tell her what happened to Jacob, but Cat cuts her off and says it's not appropriate to discuss it at this time. Alice finds it incomprehensible that her mother would create a book about a subject she won't even discuss with her own daughter. Alice tries to diffuse the tension by reminding Cat and Del that they once loved one another and asks how they got so jaded and resentful. Elliot and Cat cross paths in the barn. As Cat leans her head against Elliot's shoulder, they engage in a heartfelt conversation about the past. If he recalls their former acquaintance Alice, Cat asks. Cunningly, he claims that he vaguely remembers. She talks about the grainy Polaroid photo she found of Alice, but admits she can't quite place her appearance. Alice is in the house looking for information on Jacob's disappearance on the internet when she gets a call from Brady. Before Alice cuts him off and hangs off, the two have a brief, angry conversation about his girlfriend moving in with him. Alice, frustrated, goes to the pond and tries to travel back in time to 1999 in an attempt to get some true answers. Regretfully, she dies in, only to reappearance in the present timeline. Alice visits Elliot after her time travel attempt fails and informs him that the pond would not allow her to go back to 1999. He explains to her that the pond has strange workings and that it will only allow her to cross when the time is right. He exhorts her to spend her time here on Earth. When a defeated Alice gets home, she discovers Del heading to the farmer's market. Del demands that Alice go to the market with her. While preparing their booth, Del's friend Byron stops by. Del introduces him to Alice, and it is revealed that he has been a resident for six years and is the editor of the local newspaper. Del blushes and brushes her hair back the same way she used to with Colton when she speaks to Byron. It's clear they have a thing for each other, even though neither of them is willing to acknowledge it. Kat searches Alice's room back at the farmhouse in the meantime. While searching for her daughter, she stumbles onto an ancient edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The phrase, but it's no use going back to yesterday, because I was a different person then is highlighted when she opens the book. After giving that some thought, she shuts the book. She discovers a message from Alice on the bed, informing her that Del brought her to the farmer's market. With a frustrated sigh, Cat heads to the market. Cat is greeted with memories of her family frantically passing out flyers at the market in an attempt to locate a missing Jacob as soon as she gets there. She sees Alice and Del after she gets over the memory. Telling Del to quit interfering, she pulls her to the side. Del tells her not to lock Alice up and gives her unwanted advice. While Kat and Del are still arguing, Alice asks Rita to explain what transpired with Jacob. Rita declines to divulge such information since she believes it is not her place. Disappointed, Alice flees, but Kat and Del are too preoccupied with their argument about the past to notice. Del reiterates her denial of sending the letter to Kat and claims that she never urged her to return home as the two dispute about why Kat is even there. This aggravates Kat, who knows she has the letter, and she ends the call. Kat visits her father's grave in the cemetery. As soon as she arrives, she tells him how much she has missed him and how much she wishes he was still alive to greet Alice and serve as her mentor. She is startled to discover when she gets on her knees, that Jacob's name has been placed to Colton's tombstone. Alice visits the local newspaper and requests access to the archives in the hopes of learning more about Jacob. She comes onto a report regarding Jacob's abduction. According to the article, he climbed onto the Ferris wheel with Cat and then abruptly disappeared from the seat. Alice is abruptly stopped in her tracks in her studies when Dell arrives and informs her it's time to leave. Del shows Alice the location of her grandfather's death as he drives her home. She informs her that he passed away in a car crash only three months after Jacob vanished. 
Dell informs Alice that although she is entitled to the truth, she should let go of the narrative after she has heard it, Pat because she doesn't want Dell about the Greystone as soon as he and Alice get to the farmhouse. Dell tells her it was time to let go after she becomes extremely distressed upon learning that her mother had Jacob officially declared deceased. She continues to deny ever mailing the letter to Kat, but she does explain that the death certificate was the catalyst for writing it. Dell explains to Kat that she didn't send the message because she anticipated Kat wouldn't take it well. Dell claims that since she was the only person waiting for Jacob to get home at the house, she has given up on him. When Kat tries to tell Dell that she is aware that she believes she is too responsible for Jacob's disappearance, Dell abruptly cuts her off and says she has no right to say such thing. Dell informs Kat that tomorrow is Jacob's memorial service. When Kat becomes furious, Dell reminds her that since she has been gone for 20 years, she has no right to be upset about it. Dell, according to Kat, caused their separation by refusing to let Kat support her. Dell reminds her that in order for her to move on, Kat must also let go of the past. Kat uses the barn as a haven. When Elliot discovers her there, they talk about the memorial and the pain that Jacob's passing has left behind. In Elliot's arms, Kat sobs and confesses that she feels guilty for not shielding Jacob. Kat sees Alice waiting for her when she enters. If she ever wonders what happened to Jacob, Alice asks. Kat reveals to her that she considers it daily. Alice tells Kat that she wants to stay at the farm and get to know her family, even the ones who have passed away, rather than going back to Minneapolis. A thoughtful as Dell puts on her wedding band and sits at her vanity, she wonders of little Jacob. In a flashback, the two cuddle on the bed and play with a teddy bear. Dell gets over the flashback and gathers her thoughts. Upon entering the living room, Kat discovers Alice clutching a worn-out leather-bound book. It's an old family heirloom, Kat explains. It documents the births and demises of the Landry family members. In the downpour, Rita, Elliot, Alice, Dell, and Kat pay tribute to Jacob. Dell talks to them about her ideal little child as they stand in the laundry field. In a heartbreaking scene, Elliot holds Kat's hand as she lets go of her baby and releases a single blue balloon into the sky. Kat informs Brady of the phone following the memorial that she is unable to write the book about her family. She informs him that she intends to stay and expresses her want for the greatest memories of her early years to come true. At the pond, Elliot discovers Alice. She informs him that she wishes to visit Jacob again. Elliot observes and grinned knowingly as she dove in. When they enter Jacob's name and death date, October 29, 1999, into the family book, Del finally lets her guard down and accepts Kat's support during a tearful moment inside the farmhouse. Del then to the bedroom and gives the small bear that Jacob left behind a kiss. The episode concludes with Alice arriving in 1999, when she discovers young Jacob and adolescent Kat laughing and playing in the tall grass. Alice's reappearance makes Kat and Jacob happy, and the three of them dash out for another laundry family meal. The Way Home's latest episode was an intense emotional roller coaster. I adore how even William's endearing portrayal of Elliot interjects humor and insight into the narrative. It is so wonderful to see his evident love for Kat in both time frames. I can't wait for the day when she realizes how much he cares for her. Come on, Kat. I also think it's brilliant that he is in the know, in both timelines, and can always be Alice's voice of reason, regardless of when she is. This episode gave us a lot more insight into the challenges faced by the Landry family, in addition to providing additional information about Elliot and time travel regulations. I'm sorry for Alice, Kat, and Dell as they attempt to make sense of the revelations. Oh, Andy McDowell, how she gently removed Dell's exterior this week, revealing the grieving mother beneath all of that pride and fortitude. We got to see a peek of those precious times she shared with her infant boy before she lost everything through the flashbacks involving young Jacob. Even though 20 years have gone, I adore how the authors juxtapose the agony with the moments of happiness to show us just how real the character's suffering is. Hallmark's success with this series is enormous. 
I'm eager to find out more about the family's secrets and to see how the mystery surrounding Jacob's abduction is solved. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.